The Assemblage Point Keys and Secrets to Carlos Castaneda's Books, Part 6 Hello, this is Chris P. King. Wake up with a video about Carlos Castaneda and his books and what you need to know to unlock the knowledge and wisdom in these books. Because we cannot use everything that's written in there. It's partly fictional. It's partly a shamanistic system of sorcery, but it's also the way of the man of knowledge towards enlightenment. And few things are so important to understand it as the assemblage point. Because it tells us everything we need to know about the scriptic saying of the ancient Vedic Rishis, that the world is an illusion. Is the world really an illusion? Because we perceive, we know we perceive, we sense something. We don't even know if we're thinking. And the old cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. As Jed points out, the correct way is, I sense, therefore I am. So we sense something, we perceive something, but what we perceive is purely learned. It's purely learned. There is something out there, we know there is something out there that is somehow real and can be perceived. The unreal part is what our senses tell us is there. There is no direct connection between what's out there and what's in there. There's always a translation, an interpretation. So, perception is a condition of alignment. It is a conditioning. Perception is learned. Not only knowledge is learned, thoughts and emotions, but also perception. What we learn to perceive is what we perceive. And what we don't learn to perceive, we cannot perceive. We just don't see it, even if it's staring us into our eyes just in front of us. And knowledge is independent of language. You can receive objective knowledge, although you cannot understand it, or where it exactly is coming from. You cannot put it into words when it's coming. Hearing or reading words is never an objective knowledge, only hearsay. But how do we get to objective knowledge? How do we get to perceive the rest that we cannot perceive because we have been taught not to perceive it? How do we do we see, how do we think, how do we experience something else when we have been trained to perceive only this, only one aspect, our shared mass delusion. Our shared mass delusion is not a delusion because it's not true, but because we think it's the only one. But we can change this perspective. We can perceive something else. We can perceive other realities. We can make impossible things possible. If we shift our perspective, if we shift our perception. But how to do that? By shifting the assemblage point. What is the assemblage point? The assemblage point is the thing that makes us see only the same stuff again and again and again until we believe this is it. This is the only true thing because we have been seeing it all our lives. The assemblage point is even what creates what we experience as time. Time is also relative. Time is also part of this illusion, which is not an illusion, but just a limited, very limited, narrow perspective. Very limited and narrow. 
and very persistent. And it's a habit now. It's a brainwashing. It's a conditioning. It's an alignment. And this alignment we can derail. We can shift it somewhere else. And this often happens when enlightenment happens to people. This alignment starts to shift. It starts to lose, to loosen up. It leaves the place where it has been stuck until that point. Suddenly it shifts. Suddenly you can perceive something else. And whatever you perceive is also not the reality. It's just another reality. It's another truth. It's another perception, another perspective. And you can shift it again and again and again. For some people it shifts even if they want it or not. And once you have seen several of those realities enlightenment has happened because enlightenment is the realization that there is more than one reality. That everything is that we have believed so far to be true is just that a belief that we have been learned, that we have learned. Yeah, that has been beaten into us by repetition. Repetition. Distraction. Misconception. So, the question now is of course how to move this assemblage point. Well, you don't have to do anything because it will move by itself when enlightenment happens to you. You can also move it prematurely, but I wouldn't recommend this without a guide. Someone who tells you, okay, what to make of this. Because you cannot imagine what it is like to perceive another reality because you only know one reality. You cannot imagine how it is suddenly to perceive a reality that is completely different, that is just nothing like this. Because we have nothing to compare to. Our wildest fantasies are based on our conditioning, on the images we have seen already, on the thoughts and emotions we had already or heard about. Some stage act, some theater that we have been watching and participating in all along. It's like we have been growing up in a prison. And now we are outside the prison. Or on the wall between outside and inside. And it's scary as hell. Because once you jump down there and are on the outside of the prison, you are alone. There may be some a handful of other people, maybe a few hundred even. But you may not ever meet one of them. So it's your choice to be part of the mass illusion that this is the only reality or to be alone outside and to see different realities but to be alone. To see reality in realities the first time like Neo when he starts to see the code is a shock that will shatter your world and everything that you have believed about the world and about yourself. And your life will change completely because you're not part of it anymore. There are several ways to shift your assemblage point. Although, as I've just said, this might not be a comfortable thing. And it's probably better to have someone nearby who can guide you a little bit. But two ways are by willpower. Just as you can stop your inner dialogue by willpower, you can achieve your assembly, 
shift your assemblage point to willpower or by surrender by complete surrender because complete surrender also entails the possibility that everything you think you know everything you believe might be wrong most people they are playing enlightenment it's hard to want enlightenment because you don't know what it is and because the only thing that you think you are that you are identified with really really doesn't want it your personality doesn't want it your personality is geared towards this one reality that it has perceived all its life and it doesn't want another reality because it's unfamiliar it doesn't want something completely new but if you relinquish the reins if you give up surrender if you submit to the divine consciousness then this is exactly what may happen and if it does happen don't make the mistake of the old seers carlos describes that they think they are invulnerable then they're not if you die in the matrix you die same if you die in the illusion of the mass illusion of this one reality you die and in whatever reality you die you die so don't overestimate any new perceptions and abilities that may come once the assemblage point shifts there's an inbuilt stabilizer in the assemblage point so in all likelihood it will stay at the same place to get out of this stabilization you first have to accept that everything you know and everything you see and perceive is learned is conditioning next you need to lead an impeccable life what does it mean to lead an impeccable life to be radically honest to yourself to live healthily it's not possible to eat a lot of crap and be able to control your vital your subtle which is exactly that you need to have a chakra system meridian a meridian system that is unblocked it is free and you need to conquer fear and carlos also writes that you have to accumulate power and you need to have a certain level of power of surplus power always available so that you can use it to shift and maintain the point how to get how to accumulate this is exactly the same to lead an impeccable life and a healthy life and to not waste your energy on your internal dialogue and your fears thank you for listening thank you for liking and subscribing thank you to all my patrons thank you for joining me as a patron and see you soon